Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this pretty little basket using the Berry Basket Bigs die. Oops, getting attached there. Let's put that back. I'll show you what that is later. Um, the first basket that I did with the lace is this one and I showed this on my blog about three weeks ago. Um, but I have been disappointed with it because the ribbon keeps coming off. Um, if I tip it upside down you can see what I mean. Okay, like that one there and these two pieces here that are coming unstuck. Okay. Um, I keep going around and sticking it back down again but it really isn't very satisfactory. Before I move on, just to say that this one is in Sahara sand. I've made it exactly the same except for the ribbon bit that I'll show you on the mint macaroon one. Um, and the ribbon is the Sahara sand. I um, can't think what they call it but uh, it's the only one that comes in that. Whereas this one, this rib, um, lace, it comes in all the five new colours. This one's mint macaroon and today I'm going to be using uh, delightfully Dijon. So I'll start off with the card pieces that you're going to need. First of all, eight and a quarter inches by ten inches scored and folded at five inches, which is 21 centimetres by 25.5 and scored and folded at 12.75 centimetres. And then you need a piece that's five and five eighths inches by eight inches, which is 15 by 20.5 centimeters and then you need a piece that is 2 and 15 sixteenths by 5 and 13 sixteenths sorry about that but this is the bit that's going to go inside the basket in there just so that you get a nice base to it um, you may have to trim a little bit off um, I'm not quite sure, um, but it came up for sixteenths of inches, so I've had to leave it. And as best I can do with the centimetres is 7.25 centimetres by 14.5 centimetres. Then you need a piece that's three quarters of an inch by 11 inches, and that's two centimetres by 28 centimetres. And then you need scraps for all of the flowers. Now there are a total of 14 of these all the way around. Five front, five back and two on either end. So that's quite a lot of scraps. Move that out of the way. Now the first thing we're going to do is actually use our Big Shot. So I'll bring that up. Now the berry basket is actually meant to make this size, this is one that I've been practicing on, um, but it's meant to do that, but the one that we're going to be making is double this size. Right, I have been having fun with this, um, trying to get the lace sorted out, but I think I've, I have it all sussed now. Right, so we're going to start off with our folded piece and I've been working this way around all the time so I'll stick with it. Um, you can see the marks on here, the, the cut lines. So what we're going to do is where you see this line here, you're going to line this fold up just on the inside so that it's not going to get cut. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll line it up, then I'll hold it up for you to see. Let me just get that straight first. Right, okay, let's see. Yep, you can see that, can't you? Okay, so there's just a little bit there. Um, I don't know whether that's a sixteenth or an eighth but also make sure that you've come over this cut line and you've come past this cut line as well but don't take it as far as that cut line alright so let's put that on there make sure it doesn't move right 
okay I have the other cutting mat, mat underneath so I'm going to push those two through right so what we finish up with now is the base for our basket and we don't need those little bits that have stayed in the slots. If you saw my previous video you will know that uh, I've upset my basket because I put some masking tape on it. I was following the instructions of um, an American demonstrator and she suggested putting painter's tape on here to get yourself a straight line. Um, I tried it with masking tape but our masking tape is far too strong for it and it took such a lot for me to try and pull it off um, it's upset these bits here I'm not sure it's on one side right okay so we've got these pieces you should finish up with two straight ones like that um, it should be two like that and again if you saw my previous videos you know that I tear those bits off and these two at the top I saved them because I have used these as a little trim for other cards I find them very useful and that is actually straight so that's very useful as well when you're looking for just a strip of your paper right so the next one we're going to do is our large piece and that just goes over as normal if you were making a normal size basket you'd have two pieces this size and you would just cut out the two the same. There we go. quite close to the edge wasn't it that one? I'll have to just check make sure I didn't go too close just make sure I didn't lose anything <sighs> crikey that was close wasn't it look at that oh lucky Right, okay, let's put this away now. Now the fun starts. Right, so what we need to do, you will find that there's score marks here. And just bear with me while I just trim these little bits off, because they will be visible. I don't want to go to the trouble of making a beautiful basket and have that little bit irritating me all the time. So, there we go. Right, so there are score lines here and we're going to fold them on those lines. Go away you. So that one folds over. And that one folds. And then this one. And then this one. So what we need to do is cut this one in half, the smaller one, because we're going to have one piece this end and one piece this end. I just guess where the cut is going to be. Aim for the middle 
and it will be fine. Now this is the reason why I put the extra bit on the inside, that piece that came up with the sixteenths. You could put it at the bottom and then put the piece across there. Um, it really doesn't matter. I prefer it on the inside because it will cover up that fold then. If that fold line is going to be visible, I'd rather it was visible at the bottom there. Right, so with my Tombow, I'm going to put some glue on the bottom here. Now when you do this, don't allow your glue to come too close to these, the bottom of these little slots, otherwise it will leak out. And you really don't want that to happen. And when you put that onto there, you should be able to see the underneath sheet very, very slightly. And then we do the same for the other end. Okay, make sure you can see the lower piece coming through, just an absolute tad. But it does help from the point of view that you can judge whether you're straight or not, because you should have the same size either end. There we go, so that's fine. Now we have to put these pieces on, and I find it's easiest if I use Tombow. Make sure that sticks down properly. Let's do this end. That was obviously the first end that I did. Right, so what I'm going to do is, if you've ever made one of these baskets before, um, the normal size, you will know that when you're putting this on, you've always got one spare scallop before there's a fold to go round the corner. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to leave one scallop there. That's easier to see. Okay, so I've got one spare scallop there and I'm going to leave one there. And on this one, I suppose logically, there is a fold mark. So let's just put the glue on this, but don't go onto the two scallops that are going to be your spare ones. Okay, so I've left that spare and I've left that one spare as well. Now I'm going to pop this on here. And I'm going to make sure it all lines up at the top here, turn it over and make sure it's not coming too high up here as well. Beauty of Tombow, it does give you a few seconds to move your things about if it's needed. Okay, so now this one, that scallop is going to be spare and it's going to be coming all the way along here. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put my glue from here right to the end. Okay, so one spare one, line the rest up. Check it from the other side. Check it from that side. Okay, so I can't see anything over the top there from the back or the front. Now the next one, I see it's the straight ones I'm after, uh, the scalloped ones I'm after. So that's going to be adhered on there. Okay, so I need to leave one spare one, which is that one there. I'm going to fold that. So that will help me come round the corner. And I also know that I've got to leave the one spare one. Don't put glue on it. 
Okay, so I'm going to line that up. I'm just going to butt it up against that. On this bit, you could be using the straight pieces to come around here because you're putting lace on, it's going to be covered up. But it is so, so useful having those scallops there to guide you on the right length and where you've got to do your folds. Okay, so there's that one. And now with this one, I'm going to leave one spare one there. See where that's going to be coming along. Right, and I can see that that's coming to the edge of my box. That's going to be my spare one. So let's fold that there. Okay, so I'm going to put my glue, leave one spare that end and to this end because you've got the one spare one for this side and you've got one spare one for this side. So I'm going to put glue onto that one. Sorry if this is getting covered up. Let's see. Okay, so you can see I've left the two there. So come round the corner. Make sure that lines up. Turn it around to make sure you're still straight from this side. That's great. Now I've got to put glue on this one. Again, I've got to leave that one there, which is on this, this side, and I need one for this side. So I'm just going to do the last four. Okay. So that's there nicely. Make sure that's down okay. Now we need the last piece that's going to come around here. So what I'm going to do, lay that one against there where it's going to be going. Come along. Now this one isn't going to be a complete finish so I wonder should we No, okay, we have to fold in a slightly odd position here. It's not going to come up to a complete um, scallop. I'm not quite sure why that's happened because it didn't happen to me before. And I have done that correctly all around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one off because that end, well, two of them, we don't need them. I just think that that scallop there, that one there, the end one, I think it's probably bigger than that one. So with a bit of luck, this is going to go up. Oh yes, that's much better, because that's only going to go around the corner anyway. Okay, so what I will do is, I'm now lining this one up to the edge, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim an absolute tad off of this so that it settles down. You could leave it like that because the ribbon is going to be going over it. But I'm going to cut just a tiny piece off. And I'll show you how much I've cut off. There we go. All right. Now if I do that, put that there, bring this one along now. That's it. Now I've got a complete scallop, so I'm going to leave one so I can come around the corner, fold that, and I just need that to adhere onto there. That one's already done. So what I'll do, as you come around this last one, just cut off after the last one because what we're going to do is when we adhere this onto here like this 
as this comes round that's going to adhere onto that last one okay right um, remind yourself what are you doing don't go past that but you can come right up here there we go that should be fine Turn it from the back to make sure that's still all right. And then this last one, I bring in one of my pegs. I'm just going to put glue on the outside there. I mean, you could use other types of glue to do all of this. It's just that I do prefer Tombow because I like the fact that it gives me just a little while to double check that I've got everything in place. Okay, so if we do that one. Right, now I'm waiting for that to dry. Um, for the flowers, I'm only doing one because I've got uh, all mine sitting over there ready. But just to show you what I've done, um, I did get my two stamps out ready. Here they are. And I forgot to get my ink. Wouldn't be right if I didn't forget something, would it? It's a bit like the classes that I do. Nearly always forget something. Right, stamp sets I'm using. First of all, this small flower is coming from the Petite Petals. And I'm using this one. And the larger flower is this one and it's from the flower shop and both of them have a coordinating punch and with the little ones that's the um, petite petals punch now all the petals are the same so it doesn't matter which way round you stamp on this on this one all the petals are different so there is only one way of doing it so that it punches out properly so once you've identified which the petal is that you need to stamp at the bottom so that you put your punch into it, mark it with an arrow so that you only ever have to sort that out once. Right, so what I did was... One, let's move that right out of the way. and that one can go right out of the way as well and punch them out just line them up oops, no I need the other one now don't I trying to get rid of everything too soon. Now the little one. There we go. Now I take a pencil to curl the big one. And then the little one, I just take my paper piercer, put that into the palm of my hand and give it a squash. You, most people tend to use their um, piercing mats for that. So the next is to put Tombow in the middle, pop that on so it sticks. and then to put a pearl on it and I use one of the larger ones like that 
that. Okay, so you need to make 14 of those. I'll save that for another project. Now here are mine, already with their um, dimensionals on the back and already with the backs taken off. Something else I recommend with the flowers, in fact let's bring that one back because it's not sticky on the back, is if you've got a wink of Stella pen just go over and paint this flower here. I can't remember whether I've done mine or not but you can do this once you've put all your basket together but this really does look lovely. I don't do it over the big one. I just do my little one. Okay, let me show you that. Lovely, isn't it? It takes it from being flat to something that's really got some life to it. Did I do it? Yes, I did it on these. There you go. Beautiful. I think, oh yes, I did it on these two. Yeah, you can see that. So, I'll bring my box back in. What I do is, the first one I do on this line here. Now what you need to think about is where the lace comes down if you don't want it covering your flowers, you've got to put your flowers quite low, okay, like mine. It's covering my flowers up here. Uh, how's best? You can see this, can't you? Um, let me use this. Okay, so it's covering my flowers up from there. Okay. Um, these ones are more, more or less totally exposed. But the reason I haven't put them just long, along this bottom line here is because you need to be careful with your dimensionals that they don't actually go over these slots because obviously it's going to be showing from the inside. Okay if you're putting liners on the inside or something um, but I just want to keep my options open. So I do um, this one I tend to bring down because I know that's not going to interfere with the slots and that one won't interfere with the slots either. Just make sure it doesn't go so it's going to be raising the box up off the floor. Okay so there's those two and then I'm just going to pop these two in between So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put that one up so I've got my petal onto the scalloped bit. This one I'm going to bring down because this bit is quite thick here so it's a lot easier to move, um, avoid the slots. So put that one down there and then the next one up the top again. Okay. I will come back afterwards and squash up my flowers and, or at least fluff up my flowers. I'm not going to spend time doing it now. Now these two I do just below, one single petal just below the scallop. And you, it is a good idea just to keep checking to make sure that you haven't got any dimensionals poking through the bottom. Okay, so I've got that one. That one. And that one. And then I'll put that one in between. So it's just touching the scallops. You may decide you want to do more flowers or less flowers or different flowers. There are some fabulous flowers in the botanical set so look absolutely super with this. Okay, 
so that's all my flowers on now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my base in here there we go see that fits absolutely spot on right so what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of Tombow on the inside of my box here just to make sure it doesn't decide to go walkabouts at all Should have brought my bone folder over. But there we go. See, it looks a lot, lot tidier in there. Right, so now we need to do a handle. I'd like to show you these two again. Um, I think this handle looks better than this one, and the difference is on the Sahara sand, I've put the handle on the inside of the box it's in here and this one I've put the handle on the outside of the box and I just think that by putting it on the inside it just gives the handle a much much better shape so matter of choice so I've got my 11 inches here and I have my ribbon longer than 11 inches but that's okay um, and I have my fast fuse so what I'm going to do first is just put some fast fuse at both ends in fact I should have shaped this first never mind all is not lost that's coming off Just one more please. That's it. Right, before you try doing that, take your pencil and just run it along underneath your strip to get your curl. Now with one end, let me show you the ribbon first, let me explain about this. And there is a right and wrong side and I think the right side is the side that, as it's on the roll, it's the side that's on the inside of the roll. You can see a difference, or at least I think you can see a difference. That's definitely my right side. So what I do is... Uh, can you see... Now this is important for when we start putting this together. There's like a train track at the top of this. Now that is that train track is what I try and get round the top edge so that some of the lace will show through off the other side. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I put my train tracks so they just fit at the top of my strap, my handle make sure it's coming in a straight line okay now as you go around you can see how much is over the paper over the cardstock in fact this looks like it's a bit shorter than three quarters of an inch no just three quarters of an inch um, but what happens is as you pull it it does stretch it out. Okay, like here. I'll just get that back on first. Okay, so that's not got quite as much out as it does on that loose bit down there. You need to pull it a little bit because we're not going to be gluing along the top here. And by giving a little bit of a pull, it will keep it there without any additional help. Okay, so I've pulled that. That's glued down there. And I'm going to cut the excessive bit 
excess off rather. Now I'm going to need my pegs again because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Tombow on here and then I'm going to adhere it on the inside and I'm going to use pegs to hold it in place to give it a chance to dry. Now when you're putting this on you can either with this line here which is the centre line, the fold line you can either make it halfway between your actual cardstock like that, so it's halfway or you can do it halfway between your the actual ribbon um, I, I do mine between the overall width of it so it's halfway between the ribbon um, but it is your choice so what I'm going to do is just going to put some Tombow on here probably for a bit over a quarter of an inch I suppose it must be and then I'm going to pop it that's got to go that doesn't matter must be getting tired <laughs> right okay so I'm going to put that in there so it's halfway I think that's about halfway there and then I'm going to put my pegs in there to hold it now I will come around to this side and put some more Tombow See with your straight with that side, if you've got your basket in, straight in front of your eyes like this, you should see that it's this is covering up that bit there, which I think it is. Okay, so put that peg and that peg. Right, okay, now we come to the ribbon. I have already prepared this because it's quite time consuming but the answer to making sure that this stays is to put some thread through it. Now you don't need to be a seamstress to be able to do this. All it is is you take a piece of cotton as close to this colour as possible. Now that's what I've all I've done already, that's all prepared. So I'm only going to give you a little demo from this end. Now you see where I said about the train tracks before. Hold on, let me just put this down towards me a bit. Right, okay. Now you see where the train track is. I am going to, if I can pick the needle up, Along these holes, crikey, very limited for space like this, aren't I? Okay, I am going to put my needle in like that, move along two and come back out again, and then in two, out two. And I'm just making sure that I stay in that line all the way along. As I started working my way along with it, I started getting bored and um, I didn't stick to two up, two down all the way, um, but I did keep it really quite small. Okay, so that's really what you need to do. Um, just do a bit of it, pull your needle through, make sure you've got the end tied. I should have a knot here at the end, which I think you can see that. Yes, I know, and I'm going to get my nails done tomorrow. Um, right, okay, so that's basically what I've done. It's all stitched. Let me just undo this bit again. Um, if I undo, that's it, that brings that out. 
and the, what I use, in fact let me get you back out again because I'm going to keep making you jump I keep seeing my hands as big as that right okay I think that will do nicely okay so what I've tried with this first of all I tried um, snail and then I tried out tear and tape but neither of them were 100% successful so what I finished up with is I've gone back to the beautiful red strip tape and this has worked beautiful with in combination with the stitching now whether the stitching would now work with the tear and tape or the snail I don't know but having had one basket that's been disappointing um, I'm not going to take a chance with it so what I do is I use my tape oops come back and I put a piece along the top this is a bit difficult for the video because when I'm working on the short end I've normally got it sitting on my lap because like this it's coming up too close to me okay but that's alright you can see that can't you yep that's alright in fact let's get rid of these now it's got to be dry enough if it's not dry enough then I can always come back later to do that okay and then I'm going to come round this far then this one and then this just making sure it doesn't come over the top it doesn't matter if it comes down a little bit but definitely not over the top right so that's okay let's cut that So now what I do is, now I'm not going to do all of this obviously because this is going to take a bit too long, but I start off with my end where I've got my knot and I start where my red tape started. don't take it all off but what I do is I cut that piece off because it will only get in the way if I leave it right okay so come back to this piece here and I stick that onto the very end okay don't worry about that because we're going to have another piece coming round that will sort that out. Now it's very difficult to decide how much you want. Um, on my green one I used 50 inches um, 50 inches so that's got to be about 30 um, 50, 30 I don't know, I can't do my calculation. I'm trying to learn how um, metrics. It's not working very well, I'm afraid. Um, but I'll try and put it up on the screen when I edit in my video. So I just have a rough sort of look at it, see what I think is going to fit in nicely for one, for uh, one length, and then I put, I stick that up there, and then I can play with this. And I do find scissors are very useful at this stage. Uh, not scissors, tweezers. Because you can just pinch up a little bit and move it along. In fact, that's not going to be enough. So what I'll do, I'll move back down this way. And although you've got ribbon sticking on to red sticky strip, which is probably the toughest 
adhesive that we ever use, um, it won't hold on to the uh, ribbon too tight. It will allow you to move it. Okay, so just use your tweezers and move that along a bit. And then when you're happy, just push it down. As I say, you know, you do need patience to do this, but I really think that with a finished result, it is really, really worth the effort. Okay. Let's take that bit off because I misjudged that pretty badly. So, pull it off, pull a bit more through, and then try again. Oh, that's better. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Where that's gone dipping down, just pull it off and lift it up again. Okay. Could do it a little bit more in the corner there. Right, so that's okay. So the next bit I'm going to do is pull off the next red tape and then cut it off at the end and move this along because you've always got your ribbon at uh, your thread here that you can gather it up a bit more if you find that your it's all gone too straight for you. Likewise if you feel that it's too gathered you can always ungather some of it. So just just push this along so that it looks about right. If anything that's going to be too much so it's easier to get too much and push it off than it is to get it all lined up, not enough, and then start right from the beginning again. But you do need to make sure that you don't, as you're pulling, you're not pulling your um, thread through and undoing all your gathering. Okay, so just pinch it along, push it down with your finger. Okay, and that is just what you need to do to carry on. Finish doing this all the way around. Um, I'd quite like to sit here and finish it with you, but I um, don't really think you need that. Plus the fact, you know, it is taking up a lot of your time. Okay. But there we go. Now if I just show you from the front here, you can pretend that the basket is all made. So isn't that lovely? I will go back and just finish this little bit off because it's a little bit uh, untidy. But it's a lovely, lovely project and the basket is absolutely beautiful when it's done. Um, and obviously quite a decent size too, you get quite a lot in there. Um, so I hope you decided to give it a try. Um, it will take patience. Um, if you were uh, at the back of the queue when they were giving out patients. Um, it may not be the project for you, um, but it is lovely. It's really, really nice. Um, anyway, many thanks for joining me today. Let's tip them like that so you can see them. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact me. As always, I'll be very happy to help you. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you'd like to buy any of the uh, products that I featured here today, please click on the 24-7 link that's in the details below and that'll take you straight to my 
24-7 online stamping up shop. Um, I will put all the measurements um, and the product codes and everything on the screen but I do know that um, they're not visible on um, all devices that the, the YouTube films can be viewed on. Um, so again I will put all of those in the details below the screen as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you give it a try. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.